All right, picking up where the first tutorial left off, we're going to jump right in and talk about processes, their memory, and how they're related to what we want to do with Cheat Engine, which is change memory. So the first thing that we need to understand is that every th general task that we run has is associated with a process. So as an example, we have Notepad open over here. We have, you know, a couple things written and, it, you know, it's all great and funny and ha ha ha. But, you know, it's its own window and we can move it around and all that great stuff. But it's essentially it's Notepad. It's just Notepad. So all this text that's in here, all this stuff has a value in memory. So, I mean, you know, let's just assume that, you know, memory started at zero. So, you know, maybe... Maybe, you know, value zero in memory is the word processes. And then, you know, at memory one, it's and their bitches. And then, you know, memory two is memory. And then memory three is and their pimps and so on and so forth and big daddy and yada, yada, yada. So everything, this is the entire memory space. This is just an example. But let's just pretend that that everything that I just highlighted right here in this window, that's the entire memory space of the notepad process so now we have a way of saying you know let, let's say we want to refer to everything in this window all this text how are we going to do that well we could say all this text but that's not very efficient especially when it comes to computing and things like that so instead what we're going to do is we're going to say you know notepad as a process has memory and we don't know what that memory is on an abstract level. We don't even care. We're just going to say that Notepad has memory associated with it. And Notepad is a process. So, you know, what what is the memory that Notepad has? Well, everything I just highlighted. That's all. That's everything in memory that, you know, is associated with Notepad. So that's great. You know, what does that do for us? What it does for us is it allows us to filter down the values that we're going to dig through with Cheat Engine. So if we could not specify the process that we wanted to search, we would end up searching the entire RAM of the computer. And, the, and nobody wants to do that. Trust me, nobody wants to do that. That's Bush League and, and that's nonsense. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to say, I want to know a certain value or find a certain value in a certain process and that process that I want to search is notepad so you just I'll show you how to do it you know in future videos but let's say that we tell cheat engine I want to search notepad that's great so we want to search notepad what does that mean it means that cheat engine is attaching to the notepad process and this everything highlighted that's all cheat engine is going to search because that's the only memory associated with notepad or, you know, and a more, you know, speaking more advanced, this instance of Notepad. You can open up 10 copies of Notepad with different text in each copy or each instance, as the case may be. Um, and it gets more complicated. But for now, we're just going to pretend that for simplicity's sake and in the um, convenience of the example, we're just going to say that Notepad has only one instance. And this is the, the memory associated with Notepad. So... Now, you know, let's say we want to search the memory of Notepad. Well, we could continue being abstract about it, but let's be a little more concrete. We're going to go up to Edit, we're going to go up to Find, and we're going to type in Big Daddy. And it's going to find... Apparently, it can't find Big Daddy. Well, let's, let's try searching up. Okay, so it finds it because the cursor and it had a direction and yada, 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 it didn't wrap around. But whatever the case may be, it only searched this block of text and then it found what we wanted and it highlighted it but that's you know that's immaterial the fact is is that it only searched this chunk right here and cheat engine is no different it's simply going to attach to a game and the game is going to have a massive amount of data associated with it it's not going to be this small it's going to be thousands of times larger than this notepad instance right here but the basic premise is the same you attach to a process and when you do that that pro you will only search the memory that is associated with that process you'll never be able to go outside of it and if you do the big daddy as is enumerated here 
the OS will essentially crash your program on purpose as an access violation or something similar to that, which is, you know, known as the blue screen to death on Windows, um, on, on Linux and whatnot. You know, people will know the kill dash nine and, and things like that and zombie processes. I mean, it's it, it's a nightmare. And if you program in C, then you know all about uh, memory alignment and, and buffer overflow and stuff like that. Um, and it, it's a whole there's a whole field of uh, programming and garbage collection and things uh, designated to it. But for for our general abstract purposes here, we it's it's sufficient for our purposes to say that every process has a memory block associated with it. And when you attach Cheat Engine to a process such as this Notepad like as we did or in the example before um you're only searching the memory associated with that process and and that's an important distinction uh to make because if if you again if you step outside that that realm of the memory associated with that process the OS will bitch slap you and it will be ugly and you will not know what's going on or maybe you will know what's going on but you know it indicates a serious bug in your program or in the case of cheat engine in your script um and it, it's a real problem uh so you have to be very careful about you know the memory you're accessing the memory you're reading from and you know some people might listen to what i'm saying and say oh you know this is all abstract and it's theory and blah 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 blah, blah. but you know it's not really all it's not all theory and abstract because when you start doing some of the more advanced things with cheat engine and writing assembly scripts and jumping around in memory and stuff like that, if you're off by one byte, then you're jumping, you know, it's possible you could be jumping into unknown memory, uh, you know, way outside the range of the, of the process that you're packing or, 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 you know, whatever terminology you want to use. Um, and, and you will not get a descriptive um, error back. Oh, you know, it will just crash and, you know, you'll get, you know, oh, hey, there's an error log. But when you go into the error log, the program, depending on what language or what framework it was written on, all it's going to say is, you know, there's an access violation, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's not going to be like a Python traceback or, you know, a compiler dump from like a GCC or something like that. It's just going to be a completely random error and you're going to have to go back in your assembly script and, and sort of do some some math and, and whatnot and figure out and say hey you know i'm jumping way outside the the realms of this process's memory and and so it's it sounds very ivory tower and abstract but this is a fundamental concept that if you don't understand uh you're never going to be able to debug your scripts properly um and it's going to be a nightmare for you and even for people that do understand it it's a complete nightmare it's it's one of the worst um problems and one of the hardest to debug 